The issue of stem cell research is a controversial one with many layers, and our next guest has spoken into that controversy many times. As a voice in Canada when it comes to issues like euthanasia, reproductive technologies, mental health, human rights in healthcare, the pharmaceutical industry, AIDS, abortion, and the role that scientific and medical research and technology play in the formation of societal values, Professor Somerville has consulted for international organizations such as the Global Program on AIDS of the World Health Organization, UNAIDS, the United Nations Human Rights Commission in Geneva, and law reform commissions in Canada and Australia. Today she joins us to talk about the issue of stem cell research and embryonic stem cells and the, ro the growing concern with this issue. Welcome, Professor Somerville. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Maggie. It's nice to be here. Yeah. So uh, before we talk about stem cells and that, that controversy, let's talk about what stem cells are. What are they? They're the cells that give rise to all the tissues in the body. Um, when you get an embryo, in the very early stages, each cell of the embryo, when let's say when it's an eight cell embryo, then each cell can form another embryo identical. That's called totipotential. And then you get cells that are called pluripotential. That is, they can form any of the tissues in the body. And what the stem cells do, they're the cells that can form the tissues in the body. And we, have, we all have stem cells. And, and an embryo has stem cells. And so the issue in ethics is not with the stem cells that we have as adults, that the use of adult stem cells raises all of the same issues as any new medical technology and medical research raises, but it's not a big deal uh, as long as you can say that it's reasonably safe and that it's done properly. Right. But where we get into trouble, where we get into the big ethical issues with this is taking the stem cells from embryos because that kills the embryo and not only that, but then you might, in some instances, people are actually making embryos mm. in order to take their stem cells. So that raises the issue about what are the ethics of transmitting human life with a pre-intention to kill it and use it as a product. And I think that's wrong. Yeah. I, we're going to talk about why you think it's wrong. I know, I know some people will describe an embryonic stem cell as kind of a blank slate mm -hmm. that you can then, you know, put in the body and it can kind of mold and shape and, and turn into whatever part of the body that you need it to be in order to help the body. And so where, did, where do we get these embryonic stem cells from? Well, from how, how from are the they? embryo. Right. So, but usually from IVF. Oh, I see. You As mean well. what, what, what are the embryos that we yes, use? Yes. Well, in some cases, it's what they call sort of euphemistically leftover or spare embryos from IVF. And there are thousands of those, in, or probably tens of thousands of those in Canada. Right. And so some people say, well, why wouldn't you use them? They're already there. Nobody else wants them. And why couldn't you do this? And they will say, well, do it with the consent of the people whose embryos they are. And, you would have to have both the woman's consent who gave the ovum and the man's consent who gave the sperm. But what you're dealing with there is you're commodifying early human life. We're all ex-embryos and the issue that you're dealing with from an ethics point of view is what do we need not to do if we're going to uphold respect for human life in our society. And I think we don't use, we don't create or use human life just as a product, just to make therapies for other people. Uh, good as our intentions might be, because the people doing this are hoping to cure really horrible right. diseases and that. And sometimes that kind of outweighs our perception of what we're doing instead of you know you can put words around it that calm you down in terms of your emotional reaction and in, in terms of your moral intuition because some people would say that they don't believe that it is a human life they don't believe that no. an embryo would be considered human life that's right they they, they they're a very frequent for, uh, description is it's just a bunch of cells so again you touched on it I mean if we're looking at this and we're seeing that uh, again the other side would say there could be many breakthroughs we can you know see the cure of many things by using embryonic stem cells what is the argument against it why shouldn't we use if they're going to be discarded later on yeah it's a tough argument because 
I guess it's because we don't, we just don't throw away human life. And we usually don't do research on human uh, life, and this is early human mm -hmm. life, except where the person is consenting and agrees to the research and that the research itself is ethically acceptable. And that, you see, that's a utilitarian argument mm. that says there could be great good come out of this, so why wouldn't we do it? Instead of leaving them to just well, die on their own. But, you know, Maggie, we all, in one way or another, die on our own. Mm. And so what, what we're arguing here, really, is does that embryo deserve the same respect as any other human? and that is alive, because that embryo is alive. And my answer is yes, that we are all in the process of development and that each stage of our development, we must have respect for human life. And so that's why I have a problem with using embryos in, you know, where you're going to kill them. Mm -hmm. Just as I've got a problem with euthanasia where you're going to kill somebody. Right. And I think that respect for human life means that we don't intentionally kill. But the new issue that this raises as well is, and no humans before us have ever had to think about this, because the only way you could transmit human life was good old fashioned intercourse. Yes. But now you can make an embryo in a test tube and you've also, you are making it. So you have to ask, what does respect for the transmission of human life require that we not do? It's not just enough to ask what may we do, but what must we not do? And because I believe that it's inherently wrong to intentionally create human life, to kill it or to kill it intentionally, yeah. then I don't believe we should be doing that. That's, that's why I'm against it. Yeah. When we talked in the green room, you, you brought up an interesting story that's just kind of broken um, in, 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 in Europe. Mm -hmm. And now they've allowed for three donors to create mm -hmm. an embryo. Talk yeah. about that. I mean, that can open up so many more issues yeah, when we come well, to stem cell research. Yes. Uh, what it is, is that you've got to, when you look at an egg from a woman, it's got a central nucleus, which is DNA. And then around that in the fluid around that central nucleus are what are called mitochondrial DNA. And they're very ancient pieces of DNA. They're like little ever-ready batteries that, mm. that spark the cell. Yes. And some people, as with everything else, have got defective mitochondrial DNA. So one of the procedures that the, Britain, the English people want to do is they want to make an embryo from, uh, from a woman who's got healthy mitochondrial DNA. They then want to take the nucleus DNA out of that embryo and they want to put the nucleus of the defective egg into that embryo and then they, they, it would be with the uh, father's sperm as well, wow. having, having uh, fertilized it. So, so we're looking at designer babies. We're looking yeah. at this is the future. Really? Well, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> We're leading that way. Yeah. I mean, the people who want to do this, they use what we call a de minimis argument. They say, oh, look, this is only about 30 genes out of 20,000 genes. So really, it's only got a tiny little bit of another parent. So you shouldn't call it three parent uh, embryos, mm. you know. But in actual fact, what we're doing there, and this is where the big issue comes in, is that is to alter what we call the human germline. And the, the genes that make up the human germline are the genes that are passed on from generation to generation. And up until this just happened, just a month or so ago in Britain, almost all the people in the world who were involved with this kind of research, and particularly ethicists, they all agreed that the one thing we must never do is alter the human germline. Mm. And the reason is because then we've altered millions of years of our evolution, because every child that is born from that altered child will have the same alteration as that child. So it's humans taking over the further development of the human race. And choosing what to do and what not to do. Yeah, and then, of course, what you've got then is you've got designer babies. Well, I want a baby with blue eyes or black hair or whatever it is. And we've got new technology uh, where they, they're talking, they call it gene editing, where you mm. could take out a gene 
and put in the one that you want because you don't like that one. Right. And so people are getting very, and that also would alter the human germline if it was done in an embryo. Oh. And so the Europeans talk, and I like this phrase about that, um, that the human gene pool, which is what this is, is the common heritage of humankind mm. and it must be held on trust mm -hmm. for future generations. Now you didn't have to, again, you didn't have to worry about that in the past because you couldn't right. change it right. except by random selection as, you know, as a baby it, yeah. was conceived. Yeah. You, you chose your you chose husband. chose your partner. Well, you chose yeah, your husband exactly. or wife, but that was it. You yeah. know, the, after that, it, that was all you got to choose. Right. But now you could actually choose this. And um, I'm going to a conference in a couple of weeks mm. in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, this is going to be one of the big topics that they're going to discuss about, because what we realise is we have to have some... Uh, international agreement on this because as soon as it's done in one country then it's very hard to prevent it anywhere else. Wow. So. You know when I was doing my research on this there's this you know there's the one side that says it kind of dismisses any sort of um, debate on this topic and kind of dismisses it as a religious debate sometimes. So, do you think this is a religious issue or do you think this is just an ethical human being issue that we need to be concerned about? I think it can be both. Mm. For some people it's an ethical human being issue and I certainly think there are strong arguments from an ethical human being yeah. perspective to say that we should not do this. In some ways, you know, I think you can think of it like the nuclear, like the atomic bomb. Mm. That, you know, although we developed that, we said, no, we must not use it. And I mean, we, because we can see how physically destructive that is. I think this is the equivalent in what I call our metaphysical ecosystem. That is all the values, beliefs, attitudes, stories, and our sense as humans of what we must hold on trust. And I've, I've developed a very um, controversial concept that I call the secular sacred. Mm. And so for some people, what they believe they have to hold on trust, they treat it as a religious sacred and that's one, and that's a protection of it. But even if you're not religious, I think you need this secular sacred which says there are some things that are so important and so fundamental that we must not do certain actions that would seriously damage them and I think this is one of them to treat human life as just a product I mean in one story that was published I think it was in the Times of London they talked about setting up what they called human embryo manufacturing plants mm. so instead of Heard having a this, yes. instead of having a car manufacturer you have a human embryo manufacturer I mean wow. we are not products in the supermarket wow. of life we're just not and and as soon as we lose that very special sense uh, I think we're in I think we're in grave danger um, although I'm an optimist mm. and I think that sometimes you have to go a long way out before you suddenly realize uh, uh this is wrong, we, we have to move back from that. And I think that's what happened, for example, with the atomic bomb. And uh, I'm hoping that's what will happen here, that people won't become sort of so inured to it that they, they don't see what the mystery that they're dealing with. And also the other thing that I think is so important in this area is we've had almost entirely what I call adult-centered decision-making whether it's the person who wants the child or whether it's the person who's got a disease where they think that using that embryo will help them. And we, and we haven't even talked about egg donors on top of that. Well, you've got all the yes. problems. To use this technology, you've got to have egg donors. Yeah. We know that's dangerous for young women and they, they will be young women because those are the eggs that they want to have and use. Right. And, uh, we, and I, I think we have to move to what I call child-centered decision-making, both for the individual child uh, that would be created and as well for all future children because what sort of a world are we going to create if we think there's nothing special about this, it's just another manufacturing process that we've got the right to design whatever we want and it will be a human being. Yeah, so much, so much information, Dr. Somerville. Thank you again. We know that you have a book coming out, and I want you to talk about that. I do. Yeah. I do, Maggie. It's called uh, Bird on an Ethics Wire, and uh, the subtitle is uh, 
battles about values in the culture wars, mm. and really that's what we're talking yes. about here. We're talking about one of the values battles in the culture wars, because what has happened is that in our society, this new science, and there's a huge range of it, it's where everybody is now focusing to form their most important individual and shared values, which become the foundational values of our society. And I think the reason for that is that medicine and the medical science that goes with it is so astonishing as to what we can do. Mm. And plus, everybody personally relates to it. And why I called the book Bird on an Ethics Wire was because there's a cartoon and it's a telephone wire and it shows a row of birds okay. and they're all looking forward. And then there's one bird in the middle who's got his back to you, his tail down and he's, he's looking behind. And I start off the book by saying, I know how that bird mm. feels because I'm very often, wow. I feel as though I'm the one person that says, hey, no, don't do, <laughs> don't do this, you know. But we are so appreciative that you are that voice. <laughs> you're that voice of media and you're that voice that we need to hear. Thank you again, Dr. Somerville. Pleasure. Thanks, Maggie.